Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. So beautiful to be in the house of prayer one more time. Yes. We would like to read a scripture coming out of 2 Galatians from the 16th unto the 21st verse. I will look to read uh, from the King James Version. So if you have another version, just please read along and uh, with me uh, silently. Beginning on verse 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law, so that I might live for God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for the righteousness is to be through the law. Christ died for nothing. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Amen.
scandalize my name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm, criticize. Mm. He'll never let go. Thank these two fine preachers, Reverend Barry, Pastor Jemerson, for helping to preside this morning and reading our sermonic scriptures. Galatians 2.16 through 21. My topic this morning, justified by God's grace. And the verse that really stuck out for me was verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate, verse 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ died in vain. My topic justified by God's grace. I want to look at this and how we are put right with God. And there are some songs that um, I have heard, and I know some of you've heard them too. And if you think about them uh, and, and listen to some of the words, and I'm, I'm not going to, um, I'm going to try not to quote them verbatim because I don't want to put any of the songwriters uh, out there. Uh, but there's some songs that lead us to think that it's how we work that predicates whether or not we're lost. I work this way so I won't be lost. I sing this way so I won't be lost. I preach this way so I won't be lost. I shout this way so I won't be lost. Uh, and, and I want to say it's not what you physically do Uh, that, that says whether or not you are saved or unsaved. The scripture tells us our righteousness is but filthy rags. If you had never done anything wrong in your life, 
but were never washed in the blood of the Lamb, you'd still be on your way to hell. And you know, Deke, you kind of touched on that this morning as I stood over there and heard what you said. And, and you said something this morning. And, you know, I, 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 I hear things when people think I'm not listening. You said, we all make mistakes. Amen. Now, you know, a, a lot of Christian folks think that once they are in the church house, once they have been dipped in the water that runs in this pool under where we're sitting and where I'm standing right at this moment, once they've been dipped in the water, they never again make a mistake in life. They never again commit another sin I want to tell you, if you think that, that's the biggest lie ever hatched in hell. The Bible tells me we commit sins we know not of. Sometimes we think a thought. That's not pleasing to God. Sometimes we say something that's not pleasing to God. There used to be a phrase when I was a kid, used to say, engage brain before you put mouth in, into action. There's a reason for that, because once it comes out, <laughs> it don't go back. Because once somebody hears it, it goes down into their spirit. And that's a hurt that doesn't easily get erased. So even say, folks, Commit sin. Amen. And so that's why we need to keep short accounts with the Lord. That's why 1 John tells us if we commit sin, we need to confess it because we have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ the righteous. It's not just for unsaved folk, it's for saved folk too. Amen. That's why when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, and we sometimes pray that as a prayer, he was giving you the model of how to pray. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trust pass against us. My forgiveness is predicated on my ability to forgive someone who has hurt me. So if I want to be forgiven, I've got to be willing to forgive. Plain and simple. So, this passage of Scripture talks about how daily, as Christians, we need to kill something within ourselves. We need to offer it up so Christ can kill it, because we can't do it. We can't kill our nasty tempers. He has to kill it. And, and the more I grow and the more I learn, the more I realize that it's only by God's grace that that 
is done. I am not strong enough to do it on my own. Can't do it, D. I need the help of the Lord. That's the only way it's done. Many have a misconception of what puts us right and keeps us right with God. I could preach nine days a week and four times on Sunday and it doesn't make me close to God. What makes me close to God is whether or not I want my heart to be right in the sight of God. Choir, we could sing, play the same amount of days. But it's got to be right. The heart has to be right with God. Amen. Testimonies, we could say it all day, but our heart's got to be right with God. So or as 1 Corinthians says, it's as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. We just making a whole lot of noise, whole lot of noise. Got to be right. So, some folks will say, well, I obey the Ten Commandments. I keep the law. All right? I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't steal. I don't kill. I don't do this. I don't do that. All right, you've done all that. And the law does one thing to only show us that we are totally depraved without God. That is impossible. He gave the law to show that we couldn't do it on our own and something had to come to take our place, to fulfill the righteousness of God. Why do you think that the high priest had to go in once a year with a rope tied around his ankle into the Holy of Holies to offer the blood of unblemished lamb against the mercy seat of God so that God could look at them through a blood filter? Why do you think that when Adam and Eve were in the garden and they had broken the one law don't touch my tree. One law. And if man couldn't keep one law, how could they keep ten? <laughs> one law. You can eat of any tree in the garden except one. Right in the center. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The tree of life was in that garden. They could have eaten of that one. And they didn't. They chose to listen to Satan and eat the one from the one that would cause their destruction. <laughs> Satan knew exactly what he was doing. And you know, when I realized that, I, I actually got angry. I know, anger is a sin. I said, Lord, I repent. But I thought about, you know, how, just think for a minute. Think about how different it would be for us if 
they had eaten from the tree of life and not from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now just think with me for a minute. Sin wouldn't have come in. Anybody here aching in their body right now? Now I know I got up one time to I got up one time, I think, when I got up to do pastor's period and somebody heard me holler, oh, Jesus, because of this pain that hit me in my back, all right? We wouldn't be having them pains. Any of you all on any prescribed, operative word, prescribed medication? We wouldn't be on it. Jesus wouldn't have had to go to the cross and die for us because we'd still be in fellowship with God to this day because we would still be living in the innocence. That's, that's just what I believe. I'm not saying it's anything doctrinally or scripture, right? That's just my perception of it. If it had been that way, I might be wrong. I'm telling you, that's just what I'm thinking. That's my what if. Because God was in total, complete fellowship with man because man was in perfect union with God before the sin. When that one law, one law, one law was broken. And when that happened, everything was changed. Everything was changed. Man's been working ever since, dying ever since. And some of us, us have been working harder than two government mules and a spotted dog. So what did the law do? The law proved to us we couldn't do it on our own. that we needed to be justified. And out of the word just, we get justice. That has to do with the law. No. Where Jesus comes in was when we were put right with the law, it was because of God's grace. That means in spite of the fact that we were horribly guilty, because of Jesus' blood, even though we deserve death because of Jesus' blood, God says not guilty. Amen. Now, I can't take total credit for that. A good friend of mine in Colonial Beach and I were having this conversation and we, we constantly preach to each other. And when I shared with him this morning what my topic was and we got to preaching back and forth. So I had church before church. But you see, the law pointed out to us that no matter where we come from, we still needed someone to atone in our behalf. So no matter what we do, unless we come before him at the cross and the shed blood of Jesus and get dipped into it, that's the only way we can be put right with God. Now, there are three books in the Bible that tell us that have the same theme, the just shall live by faith. Romans, Galatians, and Ephesians. The just shall live by faith. And faith is knowing that something that you cannot see is truth. It tells us faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's what we see in the word. Faith is something I can't put my hand on. 
But I know it's real. If you can see air, I want somebody to bring me a bucket full of air right now if you can see it. But we all breathe in it, am I right? Amen. And if the room's devoid of it, in about two to three minutes, we'll all be dead. But the room is filled with air. The minute it's gone, we wouldn't last a good two minutes. Faith is knowing that something is even though we don't see it. I wasn't at Calvary, but I know Calvary took place because I passed from death unto life. I know I've been changed because I know the minute I said yes to Jesus, he started changing something in me from the inside out. Is he finished? No. No. I believe that Sister Ann that always says I'm a work in process. He still every now and then takes that like every day he gets up with that scrub brush dipped in the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary and he scrubs something new down inside of me. And sometimes the scrubbing hurts because I sometimes I don't want to deal with what he wants to scrub out of me. But if I want to one day be presented faultless before the throne, I've got to let him scrub. So Jesus, scrub away! Your actions can't save you, but Jesus' blood can save you. It's God's grace that causes him to scrub with the blood of Jesus to wash and make me whole again. So every day when he scrubs and scrubs and scrubs, something got to die. Mm -hmm. right. Something does die. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, I, thought about, I thought about this um, because when I... Got my new roof on my house. Thank you, Jesus, before all this rain start falling. Amen. And I looked and there was this place where the plaster in the closet had fallen. And I saw this little black spot and I said, oh, I know what that is, but I know how to deal with it. And I went and got something that I use in the laundry. And I poured some of it in a spray bottle. Mm -hmm. And I went in that spot in the closet. And I began to give it a good, heavy, Holy Ghost sprinkle. And I sprinkled. And I sprinkled. And I sprinkled. And I sprinkled until it began to run down the walls and the whole thing began to smell like chlorine bleach and then I rubbed with a rag and then I sprinkled and sprinkled some more and I rubbed again and sprinkled some more <laughs> And I rubbed again, and I sprinkled some more. And then I rubbed the walls and sprinkled, and I looked, and there was a puddle on the floor. And I sprinkled the floor, and I rubbed the floor. And I walked away. 
and 12 hours later and I went back and it looked now don't look at the don't look at the ink bleeding flu through but it looked like this paper or like that cloth on the communion table and I didn't smell what I was smelling before and it hit me I says that's what the blood of Christ does in us every day when we get up the blood of Jesus scrubs the black mold of our sin out of our lives because we allow him to scrub away and scrub away and get at the places we can't clean up and cover up because covering up don't get it now yeah I could have I could have put another piece of plasterboard over it but the mold would have still been there and eventually it would have seeped right through no that had to be dealt with and it had to be dealt with aggressively and that's what Jesus does in us and when the when the the, the law points it out and then the blood of Jesus, if we say, okay, Lord, yes, that's there. That's me. I confess that it's there. And Jesus says, well, what are we going to do about it? Lord, it's got to go. Yes, it's got to go. My nasty nature. My mouth that's quick to speak evil. My attitude, it's got to go. My old habits, I can't change them. It's got to go. My will got to go. It's got to be your will. You want good evidence of that? Don't take my word for it. Right before Jesus went to Calvary's cross, he prayed in the garden until he, he sweated blood and he said, Father, you know I don't want to die. Yes. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He taught us in that prayer he prayed before going to Calvary. My will's got to go. Your will be done. Father, this is what I came for, was to do your will. And since we are in him and he is in us, our will's got to go. If we are, oh, glory be to God, if we are in Christ, our will's got to go. We have to be, must be, hid in Christ. And our will got to die. And our will has to become his will. And in doing so, the grace of God will reign supreme in our lives. Is there one this morning? Now is the day of salvation. And Jesus says, Whom I save, I will no wise, no wise cast out. That means if you mess up, he'll come get you. Come here. That's what he'll say. Hey, what did you just say? What did you just do? Did I just hear that? Like your parents used to say, did you just say what I thought you said? My mother had a phrase, what did you just say? No, nothing. Uh -uh, no, you just didn't say nothing. Come here. We got to. Some of y'all laughing, but y'all know y'all probably heard. I think y'all's parents went to the same school mine did. Oh, yeah. 
Uh huh. Yeah. We got to deal with that. And it would get purged out of you some kind of way. Whatever technique they use. And they were still, you were still part of the family. My daddy had a phrase. He said, either I straighten you out now, or the law will straighten you out later. In other words, Jesus is saying, either you let me Embrace you now, or hell will embrace you later. Come! That's what Jesus is saying. Come! While there's still time. Won't you stand?